Hello YouTubers and welcome to another series of calculators and maths. Now in this video what I want to talk about first of all is what's happening in my life. My life is fairly busy at the moment and that will account for why I haven't been posting as many videos. So I'll give you an update as to what's going on and the videos to come. We're also going to talk about some recent calculators that I purchased, one being the HP 10B2 Plus, an algebraic financial calculator, which is different to the RPN version of the, or the 12C that I was demonstrating when I was doing the RPN tutorial. I've then also gone and done some purchases of some old calculators of eBay. In particular, this is the TI uh, 2500, the data math. This was brought out in about 1971, 72, only just after I was born. And we'll talk about that and the things you need to look out for if you are buying all the calculators on eBay. I'm then also developing, trying to develop some benchmark tests for a future video for testing and benchmarking all of the graphing calculators. So I'm learning how to program on this TI-84. I'm going to talk about the benchmarks that I'm thinking of developing and one in particular called 8 or N Queens. I'm then going to ask you at the end of the video to come up with one benchmark yourself. I'm missing one which I'd like to add to the whole array of tests that we're going to run across all these graphing calculators. Right, so let's just talk about what's happening in my life and timing at the moment in terms of videos on this channel. Now, if some of you don't already know, this is kind of a secondary channel for me. I hope to post at least two to four videos a month on this channel. That's my goal. As I said, it's something I really enjoy doing, playing with the calculators and growing my knowledge at the same time as well. I do have a far bigger channel, which at the moment has about close to, has got about 42,000 subscribers, and that's where my main income source comes from. So that does tie up a lot of my time. And we're literally in the next few days, we're gonna to move to our own house here in the States, which we've gone and purchased. And that's going to give me bigger, a bigger lab to do this kind of work. And I'll also have more room to deal with the calculator stuff as well. So while that's happening, there's going to be a lull in the number of videos that I produce. I'm hoping towards the end of December and certainly from January onwards, we'll back to, be back to the normal number of videos. Right, so the first thing I'll show you that's, that I've gone and purchased is this HP 10B 2 Plus. So this is an algebraic version, let's say, of the HP 12C. Now the HP 12C is probably one of the best known financial calculators. So HP have done very well with this, but of course this is strictly RPN. Now the actual financial side of this isn't too different in terms of when you're putting values into the, the main memory or main functions to work out either future value of money or payments or what have you. That's quite the same. There's obviously a fair bit more functionality on the 10B2 Plus. But the biggest thing is that when you're doing normal arithmetic, you enter it in algebraic form as opposed to RPN. And of course, most people these days are working in algebraic. So that's why this is becoming kind of the new standard of financial calculators. So what I aim to do in the future is just do a quick tutorial on both of these, how you perhaps do um, a future value or payment, work out your mortgage or what have you. This is something that I'm very conscious of as a full-time YouTube video blogger. I don't have YouTube paying me um, a retirement or anything like that. I need to cater for my own finances. So I've got these literally also as tools for myself to ensure that I put enough money aside for my future. I mean, these are fairly useful, easy to use. I mean, on this one at the moment, I've got some values already entered into the functions over here. N would be the number of payments. So if we go to N, I've gone and entered the wrong value. So if I say, let's say 240 uh, periods, so that would be 20 years worth of payment, monthly payments. And then the interest per year, I've got, let's say I'm working out if I want to take out life assurance and or there's an investment part to a life insurance package which operates at let's say 0.25% per year. Um, the present value is going to be basically zero. The payment, let's say I can afford to put in $120 per month. It's noted as being negative because it's coming out of my pocket. It's not coming to me. And then the main answer I want to find out is what that's going to give me in let's say 20 years from now. And you just go F for, FV for future value 
and it provides that. Now there are a few other tricks and things you need to know about this. You've got some that whether you're paying at the beginning of a period, at the end of a period, and you can go and set those parameters as well. But all of that I'll be covering off in a tutorial series explaining all the lovely financial bits that you can do on this and how to operate between the two. <laughs> right, so the other thing I went and did, I went and purchased this TI Datasmith or the TI 2500 off eBay. Now the reason I went and bought this rather old and very basic calculator is because we had one of these in our household. My dad probably at one time went or another went and purchased these for use at a home. These when they were brought out in around 1971-1972 cost $150. That was their retail price. They soon dropped to about $120 but that was obviously a huge amount at the time. And that is literally, as you can see, if I bring you in closer, that was for very basic arithmetic. You literally got division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. You've got, then you can obviously clear entry or clear everything. You've got an equals, and you've got a little switcher which can either go to constant or to chain. It's powered by some AA batteries, and that's something I want to highlight and, and warn you about. And it also had the added bonus you could have an external power adapter. It has a very simple early LED display and I'll bring you in a little closer to see how well that works. So I must say it's great to see a little calculator from that era still operating. It's on off switch is a little simple slider switch on the side here. I'll switch it on and you can see it has got a very simple tucked away almost like hidden by a little shroud to kind of help the light LED system, those very early kind of uh, seven digit LED displays. The operation as noted is very simple, I mean it's literally like two plus three equals and there we've got our answer five. You go nine times seven equals, you've got 63, if I go equals again it's going to start chaining and obviously adding and continue the multiplication like a normal calculator. But this for the day when coming off um, some of the prior calculators to this which had Nixie tube and that kind of technology was a nice compact design and of course it was amazing for people who have been used to using slide rules to be able to have a little compact piece of technology like this to do some basic arithmetic. Now the thing I want to talk about is that I actually ended up getting two of these because I really wanted one. I saw two on eBay and I bid on both of them and I happened to win both auctions. It wasn't a huge amount of money. I think I paid 10 or 12 dollars for this and for this one I really wanted because it came with the original box I think I paid 15 or 20 dollars. So this one came with the original box which I was really chuffed about. It even has this the actual manual which I was really chuffed to get a very basic uh, manual that came with it. This one is noted as being copyright 1974. This is probably one of the slightly later iterations of the actual device. I've even got this original kind of uh, letter from Texas Instruments uh, thanking for the purchase of the electronic calculator. And I'll kind of just pass it up there. You can pause and I'll see you read through it yourself if you're interested. Uh, it's got a little card noting their service facilities and then it's got the original box and the only thing, I say the only thing that's miss missing, it would have come, this one would have come with a power adapter and it doesn't have the power adapter. So this is the other one, this one's a little bit more dirty than the, the other one I've got. I don't have batteries in it and that's what I want to demonstrate is that both of these sellers noted these as working and in kind of good condition which is fair, the outside is in good condition and you know if I got a cloth and cleaned it up it would be nice and clean. However, let me just take you inside for something you need to be aware about. It's a very simple compartment. I'll just open it up. And what I want to show you on this one, this one's not too bad. So here's the compartment showing where all the batteries go and it notes the configuration if you've got a charger attached. But what I want to highlight, as you can see here, 
which you know I suppose is acceptable for the age during the time that this was around the batteries were very prone to leaking and that's what I want to highlight is that batteries did leak more frequently in these earlier days and you can see the corrosion on this contact here now it doesn't stop it from working and that and the corrosion is minor it wasn't brought certainly wasn't highlighted by the seller of this calculator if we open this one up I'll just take out the batteries which I've got in here. This one is in a far worse state. There's, there's corrosion right across all of the contacts here. So it still operates. I'm still happy with the condition and I can certainly go and carefully clean these up so that at least, you know, that to make sure that no further corrosion takes place. But I have noted that some sellers do actually open up the battery compartments to show you inside. And initially I wasn't thinking, didn't realize why, and now I do. So just a heads up for if you are doing fishing around on eBay and wanting to buy some older calculators like this. Just a note, I do have a few other calculators which I personally use through either school or at college. One of them actually being uh, the HP 28S, which I used at college. And I'll bring those out once we've actually moved into a house and I can unpack all the boxes which are still packed up. If you do have any old calculator recommendations yourself, then certainly do post them down below. Um, I'm always keen to see what perhaps your favorites are and if they're good old classics, it might be worth getting hold of them and actually posting a video on them too. Right, so the next thing I'm working on, as I noted, was that I'm trying to get some basic benchmarks that we can use across all the calculators. So I'm trying to use things which I say will operate across all the calculators and then can obviously be used, you could even use on calculators at home if you want to test them, or any new calculators that I bring in we want to check and we'll keep a running record of the performance on these calculators. So as noted, I mean, when I started looking at these calculators, I didn't really think that performance would be a big issue or something I needed to be concerned about but I've soon realized there are certainly certain more complex calculations and graphing which might take a considerable amount of time on certain of these calculators and if you're under a test or exam situation or trying to do something for work and you've got time pressure that might be an issue so hence that's why we're going to run these benchmarks to see how well they perform so what I'm doing is for one I've got I, I'm for one, teaching myself to uh, program each of these calculators. So that's going to be a bit of a learning curve and time for me because I have to try and do it across all of them. And the first benchmark I'm going to do is just literally run through a series of basic calculations. So basic arithmetic, some scientific calculations, trig, and then I'll perhaps put in a variable and a number of iterations and I've got an example, I'm not going to go into the program at the moment, but like if I run the program, I've got the N that says how many iterations and basically I'm doing that so I can set a reasonable level. If I've had too few, then it's going to run too quickly and I'm not going to be able to time it. Um, if I have too many, it's going to take too long on the slower calculator. So I'm going to find a happy balance I and mean, just for fun, I'll say, let's say we want eight iterations here. And then I've got a value to insert in for the calculation. And we'll just put in a simple value of, let's say, 55 and push enter. And this is literally scrolling through, providing the answers, and then it comes up with done. So that'll be the one thing that we then time and check. And then the other will be performing some drawing and graphing. So I'm going to get the calculator to do some normal graphing, some of the graphing that I've already used in the examples, doing let's say a parabola and some uh, straight line graphing, and then a circle or perhaps a spiral of sorts. So at the moment I've just got something very simple in here. I've got this to draw a circle with an increasing radius on the screen basically. So a very simple basic start, but nonetheless even something simple like that consumes time. Up here you can see it's noting the radius as the radius increases and this one just happens to go up to either 49 or 50. So I'm looking, I'm going to probably try to do something like a spiral. We'll first do the graphing and then I'll do a spiral and see how long it takes. Now as you can see just this process consumes a fair amount of time on the TI-84. It'll be interesting to see what the 89 does and again something like the new HP Prime hopefully will fly away with a little operation like this because it can do very complex graphing, 3D graphing in color. Right, so the next little test I want to throw at the, these machines is a little algorithm to basically test the processing power in a program. So the algorithm that I've come up with is something that's been used actually for quite a long time. 
there is a website which I'm going to link below this video where you can actually already go and see benchmarks of other calculators which have run this test and the, the good gent that's got it there, it's on the, I think an hpmuseum.org has actually got the programs or the actual steps that you need to program into your calculator to run the algorithm. Now it's called the 8 Queens or N Queens and the premise or idea behind it is the 8 Queens is because it's a, it was originally designed around an 8x8 chessboard and the idea was that on the chessboard you have 8 Queens and you have to have the Queens in a position, each in a position on the chessboard such that they couldn't attack each other. So you need to find all the positions for those 8 Queens, the number of positions where they could not attack each other. As it turns out from 8x8 chessboard that turns out to be the 92 separate positions that they can be in. So as I say, non, this is literally just a 4x4 chessboard and these would be the example of where the queens would not be in a position where they could t attack each other. And then the algorithm has to work out what the other positions are. Now the fun thing about this is that you can obviously, as soon as you start changing up the size of the chessboard to let's say 10x10, 15x15, 20x20, becomes far more complicated and the computational power to actually do that calculation gets, can get challenging for a modern day computer. So we'll find again we'll have find a balance of what works well where it doesn't run too quickly and doesn't take too long and we'll see how each of these cope with a problem like this. Right so the last problem I'm going to actually leave in your hands as a challenge. What I'm looking for is a a single calculation or problem or function that needs to be solved by the calculator which is going to take some time. Now the logic behind having this as the last test is that for one where I'm running the program to kind of iterate through several basic arithmetical calculations there's a program running and each of the calculators is going to have its own language and, and it's going to run programming and scripting in a certain way. So that's perhaps not a fair indication of how a calculator is going to cope with an, an arithmetic or a, a functional problem. The graphing problem is fine. We can obviously also enter perhaps a command line for a complicated graph or function for a complicated graph. So we get that sorted. The N Queens problem, well that's perfect because each calculator will use its own language and we'll see how it copes with that, with that algorithm. But here, that's what I'm asking for, is this will be purely no programming, hopefully a very easy and simple to enter function, whether it's like a factorial problem or something like that, which ties a calculator up for a little while, while it has to work it out. And perhaps where you can throw in a variable and obviously change the difficulty. So do post that, and perhaps if someone does come up with an eloquent solution, I will then also put up a prize for that. I won't note at the moment what prize it is. I do plan, plan to do giveaways on this channel as well. On my big channel, I do fairly big giveaways. I mean, at the moment, I've got a giveaway of like one and a half thousand dollars worth of electronics equipment. So I certainly plan to do the same on this channel with, with either providing really nice calculators or something like that. But jump in, do that. And I say, be patient. I will be posting far more videos soon. I'm hoping that by the time I post the next video, I'll have made some good progress with uh, what I'm doing in terms of writing the program and starting off an initial benchmark test. But anyway, thanks very much for your support and watching me. If you do want to support what I do, you can always go to my Amazon store and purchase calculators there or anything else for that matter. And I'll catch you soon for the next video. Cheers.